Iran's foreign minister says his country will not accept any nuclear deal with the U.S. that completely bans uranium enrichment. He wrote in part on X Wednesday, quote, there is a reason why only a few nations master the ability to fuel nuclear reactors, adding Iran has paid dearly for these capabilities and there is no scenario in which we will give up on the patriots who made our dream come true. To reiterate, no enrichment, no deal. A report last month from the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency found Iran had amassed about 900 pounds of uranium enriched up to 60%. And Anna Erickson joins us now. She is a professor of nuclear and radiological engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology. Professor, thank you so much for breaking this all down for, it, for us. Uh, can you walk us through what goes into the enrichment process and what it means to have uranium enriched at 60%? Glad to be here, Tom. Uh, of course, enrichment is an interesting process. When we mine uranium out of the ground, it's not very useful for anything. So the first thing we do is convert it to gas, and then we send it through a set of centrifuges, where it gets spinning around until we get uranium-235 to the levels that we would like. So typically, natural uranium is less than 1% in uranium-235. We need to get it up to 3 to 5% for it to be useful in a conventional reactor. 60% is quite a bit higher than we would need even for the most advanced reactors today. So tell me more about that 60% threshold. How does 60% enriched uranium translate uh, to weapons capabilities, for instance? So think of it as going in steps. It takes a lot of work to even get to 3%. Getting to 60% is like 90% of the work, but the work is not done yet. You need 90% or more uranium-235 to actually create a weapon. But since you only have 10% work left, it's actually not that big of a deal to go from 60 to 90. It's much hmm. harder to go from 3% to 60. So when you get to 60%, that's not just a number or threshold, that's a message. That's a message that you are not intending to use that uranium for any peaceful purposes because there's simply not a lot of use for it right now in the reactors. So, Professor, you say that it's not a big deal to jump from 60 to 90, even though that seems like a, a pretty significant margin. But thank you for explaining that. So then walk me through a timeline here based on current levels. How long could it take for Iran to develop a nuclear weapon like a nuclear bomb? Great question. The reason I say it's not a big deal is, as I mentioned, it only takes about 10% more mm. work to go from 60 to 90. That's not a linear process. By the time you at 60, you basically did most of the work. Mm. So how long does it take? If we start with the regular uranium, like we use in reactors, that could take months up to a year. But once you're at 60%, think of it as weeks, 10 days, maybe a few weeks, depending on the capabilities. So it really depends also on the centrifuges that would be used. Iran has been deploying more advanced centrifuges in the past. So they call it IJ-6 for the most parts now. And they've been investing in getting more and more advanced centrifuges online. That means faster timelines and actually less ability for us to detect them. This has been a huge talking point geopolitically for some time at this point. So let's say Iran were to allow nuclear inspectors inside its plants. What are the inspectors going to look for and how would they ensure Iran is sticking to lower levels of enrichment? Well, as you mentioned, IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, that's a watchdog for the nuclear community, right? So all of the reactors that operate under the agreement, they have to allow the inspectors in. But who are those inspectors? They're engineers, they're scientists, they're technicians. When they go into the facility, they look for a number of things. Number one, they look for the declared material. So every country that operates nuclear power peacefully has to declare the amount of uranium it's producing. So the scientists and technicians will look, is this matching the declaration? Are they enriching more than they're claiming to do? The second thing they'll be looking is the facility themselves. They will inspect the enrichment centrifuges. They'll look at other equipment. Finally, they will take some swipes 
for traces of material. And this is exactly what the IA would be looking for. And this is how they determine the enrichment, uh, potential enrichment of uranium is by looking at the swipes of those facilities. The science is quite precise at this point. So when we uh, know that the facility is not operating as it's claimed, that's because it's based on evidence. Professor, I'm fascinated by your explanation of this entire process. I have a million questions I wish I could ask, but not enough time. Uh, Professor Anna Erickson, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.